Hey guys, Jim here. Today we're going to take a little field trip. We're going to take a little field trip to South Africa. What we're going to be doing is focusing on some really, really incredibly talented South African knife makers. And I've got three examples here that are, they're almost beyond words. Before I get into the knives, before I get into anything else, the most important thing for you to realize is these are four custom-made knives. These are unbelievably affordable. These makers will make knives anywhere from the $400 range up to about $1,000. And I'm sure there are some that go far beyond that when they get into their more art knives. But in that four to five to $600 range, you're going to get things done in these knives that you wouldn't see anywhere under $1,000 by anybody else. And I mean almost anybody. And when you start getting up into their $1,000 knives, you're going to be talking about hand engraving and gold inlays and really uber expensive stuff that would cost you, again, probably about twice as much from anybody else. So I've got three absolutely stunning examples here. And the, the two makers that are involved in making these will be Andre Van Heerden and Andre Thorburn, the two Andres. And this one right here is actually a collaboration knife between the two of them. So I'm going to move this to the side just for right now, and we're going to focus individually on the makers. And I'm going to go to this one uh, secondary because this has been the one that I have just truly fallen in love with, and I can't stop finger-banging it. It is, it is just so much fun. The first thing to get out of the way is uh, each of the knives that I've handled from these guys, and I had a chance to meet Mr. Thorburn at the New York Custom Knife Show in, uh, in uh, November. And he was, he struck me as a very quiet, very, uh, very, you know, kind of laid back man. Very professional, very nice, very warm and inviting. And every knife that I picked up off of his table just blew me away. And I get the same type of feeling when I pick up a Van Heerden. And what I'm talking about is the action. These guys should honestly be the absolute advertisement for IKBS. I mean, did you see that? I mean, that's the, the, the action is ridiculously smooth. I'll do it again here with this one. It takes nothing. And these are not thick, heavy blades, by the way. little touch there. I'm actually being a little cautious with this one because I've almost taken my thumb off with this one. But everything about their actions is truly remarkable. It's They're completely effortless on their flipping, no matter which system they're using. These two have a standard flipper tab. This is Mr. Thorburn's uh, front flipper which it's going to take you a few minutes to get accustomed to it if you ever buy one or if you ever handle one. It's not going to flip like a rocket the first time you pick it up because you're, you're doing something in a somewhat awkward fashion. But I'll tell you, after a couple times of flipping it, you'll realize that it's every bit as lightning fast and easy to use as a standard flipper is. Now, it's kind of hard to figure out where I want to start first because there, there's so many great things. So I'm just going to kind of... I'm going to start here with this one. I was going to kind of go to it last, but there's just something about this that blows my mind. Uh, first out of the gate, I want to thank uh, my good buddy, Ryan Meester Clark, for sending this out to me. This is his knife, and he knows I've really wanted to play with it, and I can't stop drooling over it. So we were going to do a guest blade episode on it, but what I want to do is I want to combine it with these other two so we have a theme. Now, realize this is in the realm of $500. You'll notice first off, the incredible mirror polished and blue anodized titanium liners. The workmanship and the beauty of this is, I mean, it's off the charts. It is absolutely incredible. Then you get to the file work and the anodizing on the backspacer. So you see, if we hold it at one angle, you'll see each of the divots on the file is kind of almost almost a red. I'm kind of having a hard time picking up the color. It's almost like a coppery red color. And then obviously the blue of the titanium coming up against it. This is just truly one of the most beautiful knives I have ever seen for anywhere near 
this amount of money. The workmanship is stellar. You got to realize the finishing on this, all of that mirror polishing and that smooth, clean satin finishing is the product of a lot of hours of labor. This is not something that you just, you know, throw together. I mean, you see how effortless that is? Opening and closing. I can light switch it, or if I want to push button it, it's a rocket no matter what you do with it. He's got, let me give you a nice close up here, the perfect amount of jimping on the flipper tab. So that no matter how you approach this tab, your fingers engage that jimping. If this were smooth, you wouldn't be able to flip this as easily, I don't think, uh, if you were trying to keep your finger up here. If you were pulling back, you know, light switching it from the front, you know, that's not an issue at all. But if you like kind of resting your finger on top, there are some knives. And, you know, I go back to my bodega a lot because I love the flipper tab, the shape on the bodega. But you couldn't take your finger back here and pull back on it because it's completely smooth. You really do have to get forward of the flipper tab in order to flip it. Whereas with this, it doesn't matter where you put your finger. It's just brilliantly made. You look at this beautiful deep hollow grind on this blade, it's, I mean, I'm really completely in love with this thing. It's just one of those knives that the more I touch it, the more I play with it, the more I want it. It's just one of those that you don't ever want to put down. So some of the details here, you've got this beautiful custom pivot. Get it to focus here. There we go. Uh, I like the embellishments, the holes that are done inside of the flipper tab there. Beautifully contoured carbon fiber, nice 3D sculpted and contoured carbon fiber. And what he's doing is he's cutting away sections. Instead of just drilling through and putting the hardware in, he's, he's actually adding an element of beauty that allows you from the side of the knife to be able to see the blue anodized liners. Really nicely done around the butt end of the knife. The tip is completely hidden within the frame. There's no chance of it poking out. The backspacer curves all the way around the backside. And then he put on a sculpted 3D machined carbon fiber pocket clip, which again, just beautiful. He ties together those three holes in the flipper tab to the three holes that are done in the clip so that you have a theme, you know, running throughout this entire knife. It is beautifully assembled. The action is nearly unreal. For the money you're spending on a knife like this, you can't get better. It is beautifully sharp, very, very sharp edge on it. Love the way that he ground this beautiful main bevel, very swoopy and very elegant. You know, this is almost like a gentleman's tactical folder. You've got very, very good jimping, actually some of the best jimping I've ever seen. It looks nice and smooth up here across the top, yet when you throw your thumb on it, you can see it pulling the, uh, the skin away from my thumbnail, it won't let you move on it. It is just perfect. It doesn't aggravate your skin at all. You can push into it as hard as you want, and, you know, there's no aggravation. You don't have little, you know, little jimping steps that, that dig into your finger. It's just beautifully done. The ergonomics are not the absolute best I've ever held, it's a very straightforward frame, but for those that, you know, enjoy something like a Sabenza or Unumzan or something, you're not going to have any issues whatsoever. I mean, you're, you're going to like how it feels. It's not a bad feeling. It's just not as ergonomic and swoopy as the other two are. So it's going to be great, really, for any kind of handhold, no matter how you want to hold this thing. Forward grip, reverse grip, doesn't matter what you want to do with it. Uh, you do have a little forward step area. It's not really going to be a choil. There's no choil cutout, uh, but you can choke up on it up here. There's a little bit of edge here on the lead-in for the grind, so you want to keep, you know, keep your eye on that. But um, in most normal tasks, you could probably keep that under control just fine. So of the three, this is my overwhelming favorite uh, to the point where I'm actually going to be shooting Andre an email and getting one of these ordered for myself. I absolutely, absolutely have to have this knife. I can't stop playing with it. It's just one of those knives that you want to play with all day long and you don't get tired of it. The action is so butter smooth. It's just so much fun. And every time I look at the finish work on this and the colors 
I love blue against carbon fiber and this is a unique tone of blue it's not a deep rich royal blue it's definitely a lighter shade of blue but it is so you know it brings a, a sense of elegance to an otherwise very tactical style of knife so we'll lay that to the side and then we will move our way up let's get into uh, the M16 or model 16 uh, this is actually made by Andre Van Heerden and you see there's there's going to be some similarities here in the way that they make their knives. Uh, I, 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 again, it's another knife that once you've opened it and once you've played with that action, you don't want to stop playing with it. It's just, it's fun. Um, Andre Van Heerden uh, is a part-time maker. He actually began in 2002. He does something in computers, and I forget what it is. I think it was network engineer, and I apologize if I'm uh, mistaken on that. And Andre is actually building me a knife right now. It should be available to me in the next week or two. It's the uh, Model 35. It was the collaboration that he did with Tashi. And once I saw that, I had to have it. And these two knives actually came to me from uh, Dwayne, Dwayne Weekham over at edcknives.com. Uh, Dwayne and I have been kind of chatting back and forth a little bit through messaging and had a chance to talk on the phone yesterday. And we're going to try to do this every now and then and highlight some of the really cool makers that he puts on his website. If you haven't checked out edcknives.com, if for some reason you don't know who Dwayne is, either through that website or his uh, legendary photography. He does photography for like all the big boys. You know, every time Todd Begg comes out with a new knife, it goes straight to Dwayne. Uh, he does the photography on it. A lot of the knife makers do that because, you know, he is an exceptionally skilled photographer. And that's hard for me to say, being a photographer myself. It's hard to give compliments to other guys, especially if you're photographing the same things. But uh, the dude is kind of like a kind of like a photographic genius. I'm always impressed when I see his shots. And he offered to let me start fondling with a, a few knives every now and then to do for guest play. And these were the two that he sent initially. And I have had a lot of fun playing with these, man. These both, when I get these sent back to him, will be available for sale on his website. So if you, if you like what you're seeing, it's a rare occasion where I'm showing you something that you will be able to almost immediately buy. So do keep that in mind. And he is an authorized dealer for them, so he can usually get stuff for you. So what you're looking at is this beautiful, fluted, lightning strike carbon fiber. Now, we don't see a lot of guys doing this. You know, Brian Ty always comes to mind with the fluting that he does, and he has sculpted various materials. But this is such a beautiful and organic flow. When you look at the overall shape of the knife, you look at the spine of the handle, the way that it's curved, and then you look at the, the lines here, it's all complementary. It's not just throwing a design onto the handle because you think the design looks cool. It actually fits with the rest of the, uh, the flow of the knife. I have to get those out of the way so it will continue to stay focused on this. Again, another beautiful custom-made pivot. Really nice lightning strike carbon fiber work here. And I can't imagine how hard it's got to be to sculpt lightning strike because of the copper wire that's in there. I would have to assume that's, that's going to be more of a challenge than standard carbon fiber. Once again, with a uh, nice full back spacer. Now, this is much more of a tactical design. So he's not going to be embellishing it the same way that that uh, Thorburn was embellished. But Van Heerden does certainly do that. He has the skill and proficiency to do some beautiful decorations. So you've got a gear style pattern, flush mounted backspacer all the way through. Uh, I do believe that is just standard black G10, if I'm not mistaken. Blasted titanium liners. The pocket clip, once again, the same as the Thorburn, is going to be a matching complementary material. Nice sculpted Carbon fiber, not lightning strike, but standard carbon fiber. It's a really nice offset, too. And again, the shape of it, the way he's mounted it, is all complementary to the, the, the overall flow of the knife. And again, IKBS. These guys, I mean, seriously, they should be like the poster children for IKBS. It just, it's, it's incredible, the actions they do. Now, this is about a four and a quarter inch blade. It's actually 4.2 inches. Uh, it's a big blade. It doesn't feel like it. It doesn't look like it. But that's a big S35VN steel blade right there. 
Uh, he's done nice finishing work on this. Again, it's not meant to be a dressier knife. So he has a really nice light stone wash going through it. It's a good working finish. Nice deep hollow grind running through there. Very, very sharp as well. And this is another one that when you put it in the hand, it drops in the hand. As much as I like this one, and I am going to own one of these, you know, it has more of a standard gentleman's folding knife feel to it. Whereas this one definitely has more of that, that fighter feel. It's a fighter knife because you've got this, this nice deep choil here that locks your fingers in that keeps them from sliding up. And then it locks you in a little bit from the back as it curls back around your pinky. So it's a fighter style handle on this. Great shape on the blade. It's going to be very useful for pretty much anything you have EDC tasks. Some guys may not want to call it tactical because it lacks any jimping whatsoever. But honestly, the way that you fit into this handle, you're not going to slip around. It's not going to twist around on you. You're not going to slide up and down on it. It's going to be one of those knives that just does, you know, just, just stays put without any need for unnecessary jimping. But yeah, I mean, you have to keep going back to that action. Once you get past the detent, the blade just drops under its own weight. And, you know, the flipper tab on this is large enough that you don't have to worry about your finger really getting cut on that. Just fantastic. The workmanship exhibited on all three of these knives really does make you think you're holding something that was tremendously more expensive. Oh, it looks like the, uh, the Thorburn did nick me. I thought I felt something. Okay. That's okay. It drew a little bit of blood. So, Ryan, you got me. There we go. So there is a close-up look at that. And now let's bring out their collaboration. Uh, the knife in which both of them worked on, both Thorburn and uh, Van Heerden. And this has got the front flipper on there. Front flippers are crazy. The first time I picked up one of Andre Thorburn's knives off of his table, I'm looking at it going, okay, is it a scale release uh, double action? Or I mean, there's no thumb stud? I mean, what's going on here? Then I saw this little nub. And your natural inclination is to do this. And I'm sure that's, that's also one of the ways that, that he designed it to be deployed. When I was uh, hanging out in Todd Fisher's shop last week with, uh, with his son Frank, when we were building our, our, our CAD for our collaboration, when I handed it to them, that was the first thing that Todd did too. I mean, and Todd's old school. That's, that's kind of what he did. And he remembers seeing these when they were first being done. But it's actually going to be used like this. And again, that super sweet smoothness. The first time you do this, you're going to pull on it and it's not going to move and you're going to go, I don't like that. Give it a couple of tries. I found that kind of, instead of holding it like this, like you would a standard flipper, I tend to, to cock the knife a little bit in my hand. And when I do, I'm kind of engaging it with the side of my finger. And it's a rocket. I mean, guys, that is every bit as fast as your fastest flippers. My Shirogorov is one of my fastest knives. That opens every bit as quickly. Another example, what do I have that's a fast flipper? Oh yeah, I guess you always kind of have to go back to, you know, the RJ Martins. Damn near as fast, actually just as fast when I really think about it as both my RJs. You know, and those are kind of the knives that a lot of us will look at, at being kind of the benchmark for a flipper. Once you get used to this, it's going to be every bit as fast and just as easy to use. You are reaching farther forward, but this is a little bit of a smaller knife. This is definitely more of a gentleman's folder here. And again, the jimping that's up top is sufficient. It does what it need, needs to do. It's very comfortable. It's a more or less straightforward design on the shape of the handle. And there again, we have that beautiful anodizing. Mirror polishing on all the titanium. And then that beautiful anodizing. Everything is matched up beautifully. It's just another one of those knives that you just look at it and go, damn. Just have to be in love with it. Now, when you look at Thorburn's work, and again, this being the collaboration, there's a lot of precision there. And he does a lot of crazy stuff. Uh, Andre Thorburn started in about 1989. He went full-time in 96. So he was doing a lot of part-time making. 
but he uses everything that you can think of to use. He uses laser, he uses wire EDM, water jets, CNC, and then a tremendous amount of handwork. I mean, the, the, the file work that he does is nothing short of amazing. And this is stuff that you see on tremendously more expensive knives, those knives that are in that two, three, four, five thousand dollar range. He also does his own engraving, he does his own gold inlays. There's a tremendous amount of handwork, but it shows the level of precision and you know the, the the qualities that he has. He can he writes his own CAD, he does his own CNC, his own water jet, wire EDM, engraving, gold inlays, his own grinds. I mean, this is a guy that just does it all. And to look at these two knives and go. I'm not going to go over $600 buying either one of these. That's mind-blowing. When you look at the prices that are being charged today by so many makers, some that are very much worth the prices they're charging and some that we all know really aren't. So there is the A-squared, the collaboration between the two Andres. We'll close that back up. One more look here at this beautiful Thorburn. The grind on this is just dead sexy. I really can't find much of anything at all about this knife that I don't truly love. Everything was wonderfully thought out, beautifully executed. This is a knife that if it was sitting on a maker's table and it said $1,200 on it, I, I wouldn't even think twice. I would just flat out buy it. And then... In between the two of these, a really great EDC that's slim, extraordinarily lightweight, has some beautiful art to it, quick deployment, smooth action, great blade steel, great blade length, very useful, and fits in the hand like it was made for you. You can't beat that. So there is just a quick look, about a 22-minute look, at some amazingly talented South African knife makers. Please do check them out. Go check out their websites. Check out edcknives.com as well. And thank you guys for watching. I'm going to move on to my next video here in just a few minutes. i got a lot more surprises coming up for you.